think back to your first ever memory of church. Do you remember the first time you remember being in a church? What church was that that you had your first, perhaps, childhood memory in a church? Do you remember who you were with? What do you remember about that day? What were you doing? My first church memory dates to when I was about three years old. It was at St. Nicholas Catholic Church in Frenchtown, Ohio, that church that was torn down in October, if you saw the video. My childhood church. And I remember I had to stand on the kneeler just to be able to see over the pew. And my parents always sat in the third pew on the right. And my first childhood memory of church is trying to see over that pew and putting my hands like this, <laughs> as if I was looking through binoculars at the priest. I don't know where in my three-year-old mind I came up with the idea of binoculars, but there I was, looking at the priest. And that's my first memory of church. Those binoculars come to mind this morning when I hear today's scriptures. Because in the ancient world, the sentinel was a profession that was very much needed. That was the person who stood on the wall of the city and did what? And watched for any danger. Sort of like the pirate up in the bird's nest, right? Looking for land. We've all seen images of that. And I bet as kids in ages before fancy toys, many of us took things like paper roll, paper towel rolls, and we did what? And we imagined ourselves looking through a spyglass. And that's what sentinels did in the ancient world. They were alert and looking for danger. Which is why today's scriptures meant a lot for people 2,000 years ago. Today we can sleep comfortably in our homes with locked doors. Before we had such things, we needed someone who stayed up all night long. And we took turns. Do you remember, well, first of all, let me say, Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Today we begin a new liturgical year as a church. The church year begins not on January the 1st, but it begins when? On the first Sunday of Advent, when we see the church decorated in blue or in some churches in purple. That's the first Sunday. This is the first Sunday of the new year. Happy New Year. Do you remember how we ended the last church year, the year of Matthew? As we got close to the end of the year, we had scriptures that reminded us of the end of time and the end of the world. Do you remember that story two weeks ago of the ten bridesmaids? Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish, but they were all waiting for the bridegroom to come. But the story wasn't a story of ten bridesmaids 2,000 years ago. It's a story of us being ready for the coming of the bridegroom, Christ. Last week, do you remember the gospel last week? It was the story of the end of time. What's going to happen at the end of time? Last week we heard, God is going to separate us like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And the sheep are going off into everlasting reward, heaven. And the goats are going off into everlasting punishment. H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> Today's scriptures continue those themes of waiting and watching for the Lord's coming. Because Advent is all about us waiting for the Lord's coming. Yes, the Lord's coming one, two thousand years ago for the first time, but also for the Lord's second coming at the end of time. In today's first reading, Trito Isaiah reminds us that God is going to come. And we don't know when God is going to come, but God is going to come. 
and turn things upside down. For those who acted unjustly, God is going to bring justice. To those who have been poor, God is going to fill them. In fact, in today's responsorial psalm, did you hear that line? Lord, come and save us. Lord, come. That's our prayer during Advent. In the second reading, St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, talking about the day of the Lord, the day when the Lord is going to come back to this earth. And in today's Gospel, Jesus is talking about that same day. How it is that we know, we know not when the Lord, when the master of the house is going to come. It could be in the evening. It could come at night. It could be at cock crow. It could be in the morning. We don't know, so what do we have to do? Stay alert and watch. Sisters and brothers, there is a certain song that comes to mind this time of year, which talks about watchfulness. Perhaps you've heard it. It goes something like this. You better watch out. You better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why. Why? Jesus Christ is coming to town. Wait, did I just change it? <laughs> so in our secular society, we're used to thinking about Santa coming, but think a moment of how it was for our ancestors 2,000 years ago. They weren't waiting for Santa, they were waiting for Christ's coming. Follow me? And so they thought to themselves, we better watch out. The Lord could be coming at any time. And yes, we've changed it over the course of 2,000 years to imagine a man dressed in red with a big white beard. But that's not what it was about for our ancient ancestors. It was about Christ's coming. Which is why for them, as we heard last Sunday, it was about us being ready so that when Christ does separate us, like the sheep are separated from the goats, that we may, might be on the list of the sheep. Amen? Amen. He's making a list and checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Jesus Christ is coming to town. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, isn't there something beautiful about that? This season is not so much about preparing for Santa Claus, even though we do have all sorts of Santa decorations in our homes and workplaces and neighborhoods and in the malls. We're going to see all sorts of Santas. But what does that really remind us about? How is it we need to prepare ourselves not for Christmas Day and Christmas meals and gifts so much as preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ? Because ultimately, it's not Santa watching us every moment of every day so much as God watching us every moment of every day. Amen? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. That's the Advent message. You better watch out. You better not cry. Better not pout, I'm telling you. Why would our, what would our ancestors say? Jesus Christ is coming to town. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is coming. Let's prepare our hearts and our lives for the coming of Christ at Christmas. <laughs>